I um, have purchased this particular Azito 2000 watt 254 millimeter table saw because my Makita has uh, developed a substantial defect um, which is the subject of another video anyway I bought this thing and I'm going to unbox it and put it together and it's um, considerably cheaper than the Makita this cost me $200 from um, or $199 from Bunnings whereas the recommended retail price of a Makita 100 MLT 100N is uh, $679 so we're going to compare. I'll um, lay out the parts on the table here and I'll do it in a time lapse sequence.
Well there we have the basic unit assembled. Um, it wasn't too bad, it's quite a it's a very insubstantial piece of equipment, but as I say, for 200 bucks, I'm not going to worry too much. It'll do the little job that I want it to do whilst I wait for the um, parts to come to repair my Makita. And hey, I'll give it a go and we'll see um, what it's like. I will have to set it up, um, line everything up, put the riving knife and thing on it but we'll do that in a minute i'll check that out soon now i'm just um fitting the riving knife and the secure these um guard blade guard and it's just a matter of adjusting it to get it square i've squared the blade up with a set square maybe these things better used that way no i'll get in This best done with a damn spout that they supply here. Oh, I've knocked my GoPro. I'm just checking the clearance here. About two millimetres, or a bit more than two millimetres, I think. And then a final Titan. Don't look too bad to me. And then we'll put the little plastic, <laughs> I hate these things, plastic. Anyway, who's complaining, crikey. Let's put them in like that, like so. A couple of screws to go back in there. Don't do them too tight, knowing plastic, it'll break. Everything's made of plastic these days. Trying to save the bloody planet, and they keep making stuff out of plastic. Anyway, now got a for is that flush flush enough? Well. It's all hooked up, and it's even hooked up to an Ozito vacuum cleaner. So we're going to do our first little test cut. I've got my safety guard up and a little piece of MDF. Let's have a go at it. Well, it sounds powerful. We'll have another go at this little piece of 45 wide, 40 wide.
I'm just sort of trying to test it a little bit for accuracy here. This is just a piece of scrappy old pine. It's a pretty rough cut because it's only 24 teeth on these blades. So they're going to give a fairly rough sort of a finish. Looks reasonably square. I haven't got my square here at the moment as I'm working in the garage and not my workshop. Well, one thing comes to mind, using the vacuum cleaner is just about totally useless because you can see on the floor all the um, sawdust. Now, when they advertise these things, of course, they say, oh, you're directly into the vacuum cleaner. Sorry, they lie. Those observant among you might also realise that the um, fence is movable both ways obviously i don't know how accurate the thing is it looks to be reasonably accurate because it's brand new um, overall impression hey for 200 bucks entry level table saw for those who've never had one before not a bad little deal um, i don't think i'm going to make a sled for it this these things drive you crazy they have to have them for the means of safety, but as far as usability, they're absolutely useless. Um, I'll take that off and I will make a sled and use it like I use my Makita. Anyway, not bad at all. There's my phone. Okay, well, since the last scene, as you can see, I've done some little modifications. I've actually made a sled to suit this thing, and the observant ones will see that I have actually had to cut the riving knife across here. This is, of course, to accommodate the clearance for the sled, and one of the reasons why you can't use the safety guards that they supply with you. One of the reasons for that is that there is too much slap in these slots to use the tool effectively. I was going to use this to do some um, cross cutting but as you can see that has just got so much slap in it and it's so flimsy that it just moves. Okay one criticism. I then used the same arrangement with my Makita one. It still had some slap, but not as much, and I managed to make a half decent cut with it in the manufacture of the sled. The next thing that I will be looking at, of course, is this. These fences are absolutely useless. Um, but hey, look, I'm not complaining about the thing. The tool is going to do what I want it to do with these modifications. It's a budget tool and for the $200 it's actually quite impressive. It's very very flimsy as you can see. The thing that I don't particularly like is the uh, cutting blade of which they supply three strangely enough all the same 24 teeth. Um, pretty rough cutting um, but then I'm not going to be using it for precision work this one I'd rather use the Makita for that but um, as a standby this is pretty good the one thing that anybody who's mm -hmm. con contemplating buying one um, I don't recommend it but the only way to get the use out of it is you have to do this to make a sled because it won't fit otherwise and um, the tool becomes useless another thing about that of course is um, as soon as you do something like this, your guarantee goes out the, uh, the window, the warranty. 
This apparently has a three year warranty and by the very virtue of the fact that I've just cut that riving knife, means that I have no warranty on this, but hey, 200 bucks is 200 bucks. And it's cheap enough. The sled that I made, of course, is quite rudimentary. Um, one thing I will point out is this table here prevents you from going further out with the sled. So I've actually utilised it and made that as a stop. As you can see here, sorry, I moved the thing. I'm at the maximum depth of cut for this particular saw, which is 254 millimetres less the thickness of this ply, which is about four or five mil, I think, I can't remember. I just went to Bunnings and bought the piece that was there in the, on the shelf. Anyway, that's it. I hope that's informative for some people, and uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.